Um, we immunize against a lot of diseases. When I first in practice, we had a pertussis vaccine. It wasn't perfect. There was great concern that it could have caused seizures. There was even a death potential. Uh, some kids got uncontrolled crying spells. I had a kid that transferred me for another doctor who gave the vaccine. The kid got uncontrolled seizures and ended up being brain injured and eventually the kid died from another disease. Uh, we had great concern. The new pertussis, I don't see too much problems. I hardly even get a fever. I feel like a lonely guy waiting for a phone call that day because yeah. it's so good. And we sort of like more or less get rid of most of the whooping cough in the young age group. Is that true? We get uh, occasional case now well, and then. Again, we're about, uh, you know, 100 times less than it used to be in pre-immunization times. But it's still circulating, mostly by virtue of adults being a relatively silent reservoir and transmitting it to as yet unimmunized infants. Well, we're seeing a pocket, maybe late adolescent young adults who had a vaccine back 15, 20 years ago, and it started coming back. And the drug companies came up with a type of pertussis vaccine. We can start giving, one is going to be given at 10, there's another manufacturer that's approved at 11, and now there's a big surge to get this adolescent, adult DT added pertussis, and we hope within five to six years that problem will get controlled. Is that true? We don't know yet if it will be controlled. Certainly that's a major step forward uh, in, again, addressing this concept of waning immunity um, so that maybe if the recommendation would be updated to say we should get this acellular pertussis vaccine, as you refer to, uh, every 10 years, uh, then we will make a big dent in pertussis in the whole population, and then we might come near it. Well, New York's school system wants it for sixth graders. Right. New Jersey wants it, uh, I believe, for either 10 or 11-year-olds. Mm -hmm. So there's a big push in the Northeast, and I'm sure it's similar throughout the country, to immunize the uh, kids who are just about becoming adolescent. That's right. And we don't know for sure if this is going to get rid of it. It appears to be. It's certainly going to reduce it to great degree because it's going to be mandated, most states, and highly recommended where it isn't. Right, and, and most more, very importantly, actually reduce the number of people, adolescents in middle school and high school, who are coughing from this very severe cough illness, even though it's not classic whooping cough. They can be coughing for weeks, so if nothing else, we're preventing uh, them from getting sick. Well, actually, the name for whooping cough, in some terms, is the 100-day cough. You That's would right. cough for a hundred days. I believe in, in China, in Chinese, it's actually the, the, the word means a hundred day cough. You're actually right. So if you have a bunch of kids coughing who never were asthmatics at age 15 and start coughing, mm -hmm. some doctors start to have concern. Maybe it is an asthma. Right. Maybe it is an infection, which we thought we controlled. Mm -hmm. It's whooping cough. And if you had a diagnosis of whooping cough, how could you make a diagnosis? Is it easy or is it difficult? It's difficult. It's, it's primarily a clinical diagnosis. Like you, like you alluded to, the doctor has to suspect that as uh, one of the leading causes of prolonged cough in that age group. Uh, the best diagnostic test at this time is actually a PCR, which is actually looking for DNA of the bacteria in the person's... Uh, Can that be found all the time? The DNA? Yeah. The, uh, it can be present up to several weeks into the illness. Is that a blood test or no, a No, it's just a nasal swab. You stick a small cotton swab behind the nose, and um, it's quite easy to do. The old cough plate thing we don't right. do anymore? That's not sensitive at all. Uh, we used to miss most cases, so it's not really practical for use. In a so today the worst way is the it's new... This PCR test, right, from a nose swab. And is there any real treatment, any drug that eradicates it? Uh, well... Yes, erythromycin and its related macrolide antibiotics, such as azithromycin, are effective at eradicating it. And in fact, that's the reason it's actually given to family contacts of a person who's been diagnosed to try to eradicate. Probably it doesn't help the patient, but it helps the patient not spread Probably to another patient. Spread. That's correct. Yeah, so it's so more like helping the community not get it. That's right. Probably, maybe shortens a little bit. We're maybe. not even sure. That's correct. So in other words, if you're coughing and the doctor gives you one of the uh, macrolide interbox, erythromycin, uh, zifromax, right. uh, biaxin, biaxin. Uh, it's not really going to help the patient so much. It's more or less to help 
the contacts of the patient. Which is a, a major benefit because it's preventing its spread from one part of the community to another. Some doctors can improve it, sometimes empirically do it. Mm -hmm. It probably is proper in a situation like that. That's right. But patients should realize we're not helping the patient so much, mm -hmm. we're helping the community and right. exposure within the community. Right. You might still call for 100 days, maybe a milder illness. Right? Well, maybe 99.5. Right. <laughs>